Hello, good evening. So we start with this disclaimer that is all those images displayed during this medical training session they are for educational purpose only. All right. So welcome to our 28th session of abdomen and uh, today we'll be talking about one of the very important topic and that is uterus. Now say in actually whenever we talk about any of the organ we talk about its nerve supply blood supply its functions etc but in case of uterus it would be very important and very interesting to understand the support of uterus so actually that is so important and that's why there would be a sort of bit of repetition we'll be discussing it we'll be drawing it right and then once again we'll revise it because that's the cardinal thing in case of uterus otherwise the rest of the topics like I means rest of the things associated with uterus like blood supply and of supply all those things so they are already there right all right so let's start with our today's topic now when we talk about say uterus right in layman term it's also called as the womb right where the baby develops it's also called as the hystera right hystera that's why all the surgeries i am good i am good thank you surgeries like say hysterectomy that is ectomy removal of the organ say for example it was splenectomy the removal of spleen right so over here when it is written like hysterectomy so ectomy means tommy means to cut and ectomy means cut and remove right so when the uterus is removed so that is what is called as the hysterectomy right so this is the word which is associated now this is a pretty thick wall structure and it makes sense also right it has to be thick because the baby will be spending considerable amount of time during its development right just a rough structure if we say so anteriorly and posteriorly things would be arranged something like this that over here it would be uterus bladder over here and rectum over here right this is a very rough layout then as we'll progress we'll see that how really it it happens but this is just a rough layout for the for the purpose of size right its size if we measure it in centimeters so that would be 7.5 centimeters that is 3 inch by 5 centimeters that becomes 2 inch by 2.5 centimeters so that becomes 1 inch so it is easy to remember in inches 3 by 2 by 1 right so that way it becomes much much easier now though we'll be discussing at length the parts of the uterus but very grossly right you you need to understand only few keywords now we know that say that's the uterus and on the on the both both the sides of the uterus right those fallopian tubes would be entering from the lateral wall so that's it the area that curved area which is above the plane where those fallopian tubes are entering it is called as fundus right uterus will be in continuation with another tube and over here it is which is which is called as the cervix and this cervix would be opening into the vagina and these are called as the fornices or the fornix right or the fornix or the fornices plural so we'll, we'll come to that right but say this is these are the major parts so this junction right the junction of uterus and the cervix that is like a neck and that's why it would be called as the isthmus it will be called as isthmus so that is neck 
right so in between if that is the neck this would be the body right so fundus body isthmus cervix and then the vagina right so that's how things would be arranged oh volume is less just a minute just a... Mm. hello testing one two three is it okay just just uh should not be a problem because over here the meter is showing quite good still let me let me increase it bit more okay can you okay um, it is going into red zone red zone is it will distort the voice is it okay now can you just confirm is is the voice okay go all right all right so let's go back to our topic so yes that's what we were talking about now here it is as i said that there are only few keywords which are to be remembered one of the keyword would be that whenever you will be doing the ultrasound you have to precisely say that what exactly is the position of uterus but it would be written it would be you will be saying something like that uterus is anti verted anti flexed that way right so what exactly is this anti verted anti flexed mm, it is not confusing at all see i'll draw something over here as we said that this is the uterus right this is the front view right and then comes the cervix correct and then comes the vagina now this is uterus cervix and vagina this is this is the anterior view but when you watch it from the side it is not absolutely into one plane they are at an angle so there are two angles that is the long axis the long axis of uterus right the long axis of uterus i mean this one right then the long axis this one that is the long axis of cervix cervix is written as cx right so that is cervix and the long axis of vagina that has already been drawn right so these three axis they would be mentioning they would be handling this anti flexion and anti version angle right so how is it done theoretically we say that anti flexion is the angle formed between long axis of uterus and the long axis of cervix so it means we are talking about we are talking about this angle which is usually 120 to 125 degree so this tells that yes the uterus is tilted in the forward direction correct this is anterior right that's pubic symphysis here yeah, over here right that is pubic symphysis that's the bladder so uterus is on the bladder and that's how it is situated now see one important point as we said that the bladder right when we studied bladder it was like when the bladder is empty it is just behind the pubic symphysis but when the bladder is full it it actually goes beyond the level of pubic symphysis and when it goes beyond the level of pubic symphysis it means it will be lifting the ureter uh, uterus right so the uterus would be lying over here right it would be lying over here that's how it would be so when you will be doing ultrasound right when you will be doing ultrasound that's the reason you tell that female that you drink enough amount of water and don't go to washroom so that uh, her urinary bladder is full and as we always say that in radiology for ultrasonography water is your friend right water is your friend so that water would act as a very superb interface and you will be able to visualize the ureter very crisply air is enemy right water is your friend and air is enemy okay all right so that's what is called as the anti flexion right and the angle between cervix 
and vagina that is angle of antiversion which is usually 90 degree right okay this was dull theory right and and there are all the chances that the way i used to forget even you will forget right possible i all i remembered it like this see when it is there are just three axes correct the uterus cervix and the vagina so this angle this angle is between cervix and vagina so that means this is anti verted this is the angle of anti version now we'll never forget because this angle this angle right it is angle of anti flexion correct so over here that's the angle of uterus so it it happens like say when you are supposed to speak it in viva right if this thing if you remember this thing then while speaking your confidence level would be very high right you will you will say with confidence that yes it has to be the angle between the long axis of cervix and the long axis of vagina and that is called as the antiversion v v right no confusion i try to do this thing because in medicine as you will progress there are so many things to remember so many things so if there is any of such method to that that will ease down that burden right one very interesting mail came yesterday and and that was about that yes when we see the lecture when we see this session we remember but after that we start forgetting well gentlemen it would always be it will always happen like that it invariably happens right because we tend to forget as such it's a good thing that we forget so many things but things which we really want to remember we need to revise it properly and for that as i said that the revision on the day 0 that is when you have read something right revise it immediately revise it within say 24 hours so that is day 1 revise it in within 3 days revise it in 1 week revise it in 3 weeks and then 3 months if you do this right 1 2 3 first time so you are re just reading so revision would be as such 5 times as you will progress that revision would become faster and faster right definitely you won't be spending 1 hour for this topic trust me if you revise right start the stopwatch first revision you will be requiring not even half the time let's say if we finish our today's lecture in let's say 75 minutes that is 1 hour 15 minutes right you will be able to revise it within 30 minutes your next revision would be say 20 minutes but all those subsequent revisions would be much faster so much so that last revision that would be within 5 minutes within 5 minutes you will be able to revise right i think athar only told me that now he is revising entire upper limb or lower limb flat within few hours every topic everything right from the first to last page right it goes if you follow this method yes it happens it happens and still wonderful thing is that at times when you are in the exam or when the question is asked these things will start coming in front of you as if as if it is a movie right so that's the only thing right it is there is nothing like say smart work there is nothing like smart work it is like when you have done the hard work you know how to revise it faster and then people say that yes it is a smart work because he is revising within 5 minutes 7 minutes but behind every smart work there is a hard work so so never go for shortcut because finally to those shortcut becomes <laughs> long cut right so don't go for shortcuts understand the things nicely so gentlemen i'm not telling the name but uh, it's okay means you can write whatever you feel right i never feel bad please right i'm repeating it i never feel bad it is absolutely fine you should express yourself it is completely fine right 
it's and and this is true not only for say medicine i i say the same things when i'm teaching cyber security i say the same things when i'm teaching networking exactly the same things you need to revise right okay chalo so going back to our topic this is this is because we so that means very boldly we can say this is angle of nt version right so we'll always now write it like this nt version so we never forget okay next next image next image over here right so cervix and uterus only one thing is left out right so no confusion this is angle of nt nt flexion sorry nt flexion right okay now these are the some of the images these are the images these are from different patients if you look at this point right that's the angle of cervix that's the angle of cervix and this is the angle of angle of uterus now this is this is what is called as the right it is it is not here it, this is anterior right this is anterior you can see this is a spine that's the sacrum so this one this side is posterior so instead of uterus pointing anteriorly it is pointing retro it is pointing back right so that's why this is what is called as the retro verted uterus this thing is figured out when you are doing ultrasound or you are doing ct or mri so in that you figure it out that uterus is tilted backwards right so uterus tilted backwards so that's why there is another name of it it is what is called as the tipped tipped uterus now there can be many reasons of this it could be like say some space occupying lesions right and they are pushing pushing the uterus back that could be one of the reason or it could be completely normal in about 10% of the females right this is normally present right it is normally present and it is asymptomatic nothing goes wrong except one thing again it is not in every case but sometimes it may lead to painful moments during those intimate intimacy right so it could be the painful intimate act but that is also again not in every case just for the reference right this would be like a bladder over here also right you can see that uterus that's the cervix see that's the uterus right this one would be the cervix and that's the vagina so now you can draw all the axes very well right and you can say that this is how you see the retroverted uterus okay <laughs> now this is pubic symphysis right and on the posterior aspect you can see all those intestines etc so that's how we see now this is the diagrammatic representation hmm. diagrammatic representation in this we'll see only three things those three things which will be uh, what are complications in pregnancy well in pregnancy it 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 can become a problem right it can become a problem and and we'll talk about it when we'll be talking about the supports of uterus right because say these supports 
they prevent the uterus. Say for example, what we were talking about, pubo pubococcygeous uh, muscle. Now, it's okay, it prevents u urine incontinence, but at the same time, that muscle, it is said that it will be playing a major role for the proper alignment of the head of the baby. Right? So, yes, as it is abnormal, it may lead to some complications, but well, there are methods to to handle it because it would be a long topic in the obstetrics but yes we'll, we'll be discussing uh, some part of it first let's understand that how the uterus is supported this is vital because the uterus is that organ which will be carrying a weight which is much much more than its own weight so when if the uterus if anything goes wrong to the uterus and if the uterus comes out of the vagina that is what is called as the uterine prolapse there are several stages of it it is what is called as the prolapse it is one of the very difficult situation for any of the female right that is when these supports are damaged or these supports are weakened so that's why we'll be putting some emphasis on that and it is very much necessary to understand it that how it is supported here we'll understand it that way that out of entire uterus few supports they are on the upper side few of supports are in the middle few supports at, a, at the lower end right so that's how we'll we'll understand all those supports which are just the peritoneal reflections they all are false support though they are named as ligament but they don't play any role in the stability of the uterus because they are just peritoneal folds as such they are loose so if they themselves are loose so they won't be able to pull pull themselves and keep the uterus into its correct position right so we'll see the false supports true supports and then what is the importance of them so here is we have taken the sagittal section and we are watching from the left side right so this is a left side view so we are watching it from the left side obviously to see these things we have removed the Perit that uh, peritoneal reflection, broad ligament, which was the reflected part, right? That has been removed. First thing first, we start with, we start with something, okay? So that's uterus, right? So that's uterus. This one is cervix, right? And that's the vagina. So now we are properly oriented. Okay, these will be the this these will be the fornix. This is called as the posterior fornix. Right? Posterior fornix. And here anteriorly there will be the anterior fornix. But here it is in this it is not seen clearly. So let's not worry about it. So uterus, cervix, and the vagina. <laughs> From both the sides. Right, so that's the uterus. From both the sides, there would be those uterine tubes, also called as the fallopian tube. So here is that. Here is that left uterine tube. We'll be spending some time on few figures so that you are very properly oriented. Right? Then we'll start drawing all the ligaments so that in a very schematic way we understand okay this is the thing and then it becomes very easy then then rest of the topic is very very easy so left uterine tube on the opposite side right right so this is the left uterine tube which has been cut right sorry So this is uterine tube on the opposite side, right? So this is the right uterine tube.
just a minute just a minute <laughs> fewer enthusiastic persons anyway <clears throat> Right, so that is left uterine tube. Now see, there are two. There are two ligaments. This ligament of ovary, right? That you know, because you remember, there was ovary over here, and then there was one ligament like that, which was called as ligament of ovary because it was sida sada ligament, and then from the upper pole. which was going towards the lateral side it was called as the suspensory ligament right or infundibulo pelvic ligament correct so that was these were the two ligaments out of that we are talking about this ligament right so that ligament which is a ligament of ovary that is here so that is here okay this one this one another one this is round ligament of uterus <clears throat> well we have not talked much about round ligament of uterus till this point yeah so yes just remember it is over there so it's like uterine tube and one above one below one is anterior one is posterior so that ligament of ovary right technically speaking this is posteriorly situated and this round ligament of uterus that would be anteriorly situated with reference to left uterine tube right because this is anterior this is anterior <clears throat> so that is anterior layer of broad ligament so broad ligament was like what the uterus and then the entire broad ligament is over there but it has got anterior layer and the posterior layer so in that reflection <coughs> so in that reflection that anterior layer and when it reflects posteriorly so many structures they are inside so there will be one more point that what are the contents of broad ligament of uterus right that would be one of the question we'll we'll talk about it but over here these structures they are so evident that yes left u means i mean uterine tube left and right right because broad ligament is on the both side yes there would be ligament of ovary that is within the broad ligament round ligament of uterus yes again it is within the broad ligament uterine artery yes same uterine artery which will be very enthusiastically anastomosing with the ovarian artery correct so that is also within the broad ligament of uterus so that's how things are arranged these were the two important things postero inferiorly it is the ligament of ovary and round ligament of uterus that is entero inferiorly right entero inferiorly both are inferior so it is like that uterine tube that is landing into the uterus like this postero inferiorly there is ligament of ovary entero inferiorly there is round ligament of uterus right will there be any cases if the uterus is absent by birth ah uh, yes yes absolutely in fact say that that topic itself is quite big but yes it is it is possible it is possible in fact it is seen that during the developmental phase many a times many a times people then there there are so many cases in which they don't realize that such people right from the birth right because all the hormones and everything right nothing nothing is detected till the age of puberty then when it is figured out that why the cycles they are not coming up and when the ultrasound is done at that point it is figured out that none of the organs they are properly developed yes it happens developmental anomalies they do occur right it happens it is not rare yes it can happen okay so like right so we understood this concept 
broad ligament of uterus and into its reflection left uterine tube posteriorly ligament of ovary anteriorly round ligament of uterus now see what we now learn is say uterus and we said that the part the part which is above the entry of fallopian tube level that is what is called as the fundus now over here i am not writing that these are the entries of fallopian tube because you will automatically understand so during your revision you don't have to really see that fundus you have to just watch this image and and you will be able to understand it faster okay this thing is covered by peritoneum so it is covered by peritoneum this fundus is important just for one important reason and this is that this is the site of implantation it is the site of implantation normally right normally over here it would be implanted because abnormal abnormal it can occur anywhere right and as we we discussed right in the fallopian tube and that is what is called as the ectopic pregnancy if it is into fallopian tubes yes it can burst the tube it has to be terminated so that is fundus then comes the surfaces right these surface so there would be two anterior and posterior anterior surface will be in association with urinary bladder so can we call it a cycle yes we can we can right a cycle so we just write anterior right a cycle means it is related to bladder right so again this is covered with peritoneum so we see we are now not writing c o v e r d with peritoneum just we are making this line and covered with peritoneum there would be urinary bladder right we are not writing here we are writing just to understand one more thing. so as we'll progress right as we'll progress with our notes we'll find that we'll be writing lesser and lesser we'll be relying on drawing more in between both of them there is there is one pouch what name should we give it to it well the pouch is between uterus and the bladder so the best is that pouch which is in between both of them it is utero vesical pouch right so that's it this is about the anterior surface how about the posterior surface right posterior surface this posterior surface will be in association with the intestines right so that is intestinal in that again it would be covered yes and there will be terminal ileum sigmoid colon they will be associated so terminal ileum then uh sigmoid colon but what is there what name should be given to that well that would be over here it is the rectum right rectum so between rectum and the uterus so let's give the name as recto uterine pouch that's it right that's it now there remains only one area so if this is the uterus right we talked about fundus then we talked about anterior surface we talked about posterior surface what about these lateral surfaces so bus that is left out so that is what is called as the lateral surface in lateral surface the biggest landmark would be <coughs> opening of that uterine tube so uterine tubes open all right it, and if it is said like that uterine tubes open so then one is one structure is posterior and second structure is anterior 
what would be that well we know it right posteriorly it was ovarian ligament that seedha sada gentleman ovarian ligament right no name nothing no fuss no suspensory suspensory ligament is another one right so this is that ovarian ligament posteriorly it is the ovarian ligament what about anteriorly anteriorly it was the round ligament so let's write so posteriorly it is the ovarian ligament and anterior is round ligament right and both of them both of them they are well covered into broad ligament right broad ligament in fact not both all three of them so including the round ligament uterine tubes and the ovarian ligament they are covered into broad ligament fine so as such now we have started understanding that yes that what are the structures what are the structures into the broad ligament of uterus and and actually speaking if you know if you say this much na round ligament of uterus broad ligament of uh, say uh, round ligament of uterus uterine tubes and the ligament of ovary uterine artery right examiner would be more than happy more than happy because then what is left out is those those lymphatics few connective tissues some fat that's okay those things are minor right these are the main things and and on top of it if you say that what is anterior what is posterior oh he'll be extremely happy right let's make things still easier this is a drone view right this would be like bird's view in seedhi saadi language this is the top view but when it is said like drone view or bird's view right it looks more sophisticated right so let's say bird's view <laughs> so as seen from top see no explanation is needed we just write only one thing this round ligament of uterus that is anterior and this ligament of ovary it is posterior so that is done and see how nicely that uterine tube is there now because we are watching from the top we don't understand one thing that it is not only posterior these see, it is the dadagiri of uterine tube right uterine tube will say that i'll always be on the top you those chota ligaments right you you are minor you will be below so technically speaking this is entero inferior right we should give some izzat to uterine tubes so those ligaments they are entero inferior so same way this is also postero inferior plus that's it right now it gives the idea that if this is the uterus that's the fallopian tube those two ligaments they are over here those two ligaments are over here and when you watch it like this that's what we see we used to see into that dissection that those three tubes so then how to identify at that point i said that yes wait till we discuss the uterus it would be crisp clean but so that is that bigger tube right that is where the uterine tube is opening and then what is anterior anterior that is round ligament posterior it is ligament of ovary but their levels they will always be bit inferior right okay now we are adding something to that o 
ovary, uterus. The coverings of the ovary, covering, right? That covering, mesentery which will be covering the ovary, we should name it something. So that is what is called as the mesentery of ovary. So that is mesovarium. Okay. Then over above that is uterine tube, right? And in between uterine tube and the ovary, from ovary there goes that famous ligament and that is ligament of ovary. Between ligament of ovary and uterine tube, this is the area which is called as the mesosalpinx. Mesosalpinx. Right? The, then that's the entire broad ligament and then ovarian vessels, fimbria, etc. Adding something more to this. Now starts that entire game of those peritoneal reflections and the support. Right. So next 5 to 7 minutes will be purely on that support. So these are the ligaments ligaments of uterus right? ligaments of uterus we divide it into first three parts in fact we just say that these are all false li false ligaments right they are false support because they are just technically speaking so they are just peritoneal folds peritoneal folds and yes i am also eager to start head and neck because then there when we'll say ligament so yes they will be all again those powerful ligaments right over here so right from the beginning day one we said that ligaments means peritoneal folds okay so then this is anterior ligament right anterior ligament so anteriorly what was that which fold was that the fold between uterus and the and the bladder so no wonder we'll call it utero vesicle fold and that was leading to that utero vesicle pouch right that fold it was forming and that was forming the pouch same way posterior ligament posterior ligament what it is also a fold and on the back side so it was what recto uterine fold right recto uterine fold and then a big name right broad ligament but but any of those real supports of uterus would say kya rehne do right just the name is big right broad ligament as such it is what it is on both the sides right and left right but it is not the true support it is not the true support because from uterus, right, it is a loose reflection and which is connecting it to lateral pelvic wall, right, lateral pelvic wall. So that's what is the broad ligament and in that broad ligament, there is anterior layer and the posterior layer and in, in that posterior and anterior layer, all those uterine tubes and, and those ligaments, they were there plus the uterine vessels. Fine. So that is what was happening. Okay. You see, that's the uterus. Correct. And these are the fallopian tubes. Correct. Fallopian tubes. And then that ovary. Right, which is like this and its upper pole is connected on to the lateral wall and that was called as the infundibulo pelvic or the suspensory ligament right suspensory ligament of ovary and then we do have coverings and that we named it as mesovarium fine mesovarium and then there was from the lower pole 
Now we'll be more specific, right? From the lower pole of ovary, there goes a thickened peritoneal fold which will be landing on to the posterior inferior aspect of the entry of fallopian tubes, right? Looks so scientific but as such so easy because we know that it would be from upper pole so it would be suspensory ligament. So from lower pole, there goes this Sidha Sadha ligament that is the ligament of <coughs> ovary, right? And it would be going on to the posterior inferior surface. In between this, it is meso -salpinx. right? So that is meso -salpinx. right? Just underneath, it is called as the mesometrium. Mesometrium. Now, what exactly all these things are? Right? Well, this is nothing but these are all peritoneum. We are just giving the name. Just it is like some of the structures. Some of the structures because they are thickened. So that's why they are getting some extra names. Right? Extra names. So it is like this was thickened. So he got the name, right? This is again that ligament. This is one more ligament, right? So far, this much. So how many structures we can enumerate till this point of time that contents into broad ligament of uterus? Now friends, I tell you one thing, whenever there is any viva, keep your confidence level very high. There is a difference between when, when you answer it like this and when that, let's say the question is asked that what are the contents of broad ligament of uterus and then you say uh, uterine tubes, a ligament of ovary, examiner would say that you are telling or you are asking, right? Be very confident and as you speak, that image should start appearing and that's why I always say follow, follow the sequence, follow the sequence, start with something which you can't forget and that's what we shall do. We can't forget uterine tubes and once the uterine tubes are there, right, posterior and inferior, immediately it strikes, it was that ligament of ovary, right, which was that simple and then there was round ligament of uterus which was entero inferior done then that enthusiastic artery uterine artery will see right which will be say communicating with ovarian vessels right because that ovarian artery ovarian artery we have we saw that ovarian vessels right they are into which ligament well they will be going they will be into let's draw this yeah here they will be into this suspensory ligament of ovaries right so from suspensory ligament of ovaries they were coming because they were supplying the ovaries then rest of the structures well rest of the structures they are easy they are just lymphatics right so few lymph nodes and connective tissue which is okay right which is okay main is this so uterine tubes ligament of ovary round ligament of uterus uterine artery ovarian artery lymph nodes but we missed something so that's why let's write it it is it is something missed no actually nothing right uterine ligament of ovary round ligament uterine artery ovary, yeah almost everything is there everything is there if you really want to add something to it right, you have to just add that few uterovaginal vessels but not to worry not to worry much yeah you can definitely add some nerves but regarding those nerves, they are all specific plexuses, right? So just for that, just write plexus, 
right these are the plexus so in in the nerve supply we'll see that how the plexuses are formed because again this is highly sensitive structure so that's why those nerve plexuses they are to be remembered right you can you can write it like they are they will be ovarian plexus but again when we'll be talking about nerve supply it will become much easier right things they are not ending over here now let's take still a higher bird's view right this time we'll be adding even more components so this is this is uterus but then if it is a uterus then this narrow part now this has to be cervix right and then as it will go down so that would be the vagina correct if the tubes are over here that means from this point onwards this would be fundus correct fundus as we already talked about that it is covered with peritoneum right to keep things simple that's the ovary right we let's start with different colors so from this point the lower end that is that now you know it it is ligament of ovary correct this would be mesosalpings mesosalpings from upper pole it goes on to the lateral side so this becomes the suspensory ligament right it becomes the suspensory yes epiphoron and paraphoron yeah they are there suspensory ligament in fact we talked about it way back right and it was into that but right now because they are embryological structures so that's why we have not added into it right we'll be adding it at the last because it happens like say your clarity is good but if someone is learning it for the first time any of those odd names they immediately stuck and it takes away some specific portion of our attention right so in the process some common things they are missed so it was there into the see this image also but right i deliberately avoided it correct over here okay no problem we'll we'll talk about it okay coming back to this so mesosalpings ligaments of ovary suspensory ligament and then the covering and that is the mesovarium right mesovarium then comes the round ligament correct so right now we are just understanding it so that's the round ligament okay so here is the round ligament now this round ligament is actually it will be going to labia majora it will be going to labia majora right it will be going down through inguinal ligament inguinal ligament so this is said that it is as good as gubernaculum something which in case of males was pulling that testis down right so this it is that embryological gubernaculum remnant this much is upper support right this much is upper support upper support and this is loose so actually they won't prevent uterine prolapse right so we'll say a weak support weak support so who is that main or the powerful supports well they are they are like in the middle right one which is it is called as the cardinal cardinal ligament cardinal ligament right then just below it right there is pubo cervical now we'll see them in different plane also so that you'll be it will be crystal clear that how are they arranged because cardinal ligament has got several other names but we'll come to that right and then comes utero cervical right 
सॉरी यूट्रोसेक्रल इट हैज टू बी यूट्रोसेक्रल राइट इट कैन बी सर्वाइको सेक्रल ऑल्सो बट डोंट वरी वी वी आर जस्ट कमिंग टू दैट राइट दैट एंगल विल टेल एवरीथिंग सो दीज आर दीज आर मोस्ट सपोर्टिव दीज आर मोस्ट सपोर्टिव right why they are most supportive to see that thing we need to change the angle right we have to watch it again the bird's view so that we see it how they are arranged and what about the lower ones right all those lower ones these are well discussed that is what urogenital diaphragm <coughs> right urogenital diaphragm then that perineal body perineal body Levator and I, right? All those they will be giving the lower support. And when we do Kegel exercise, yes, it is that Kegel exercise which is strengthening <coughs> that lower thing. That's how they are arranged. So these are this is a complete list. That right? these are the supports. Out of this, things drawn with red. they are the real supports or they are the real powerful support now let's change the angle so we draw it something like this say starting with so we are taking a section right so over here let's say this is bladder if this is bladder so that means this would be anterior and we draw rectum over here so this would be say posterior and in between there is cervix so this is the cut level at the cervix right okay change the color we need to understand three things ah uh, today also i forgot to get the water uh, no no problem in case if i'll feel like i'll just take one minute break quickly i get i'll get the water and then we'll continue right but no problem let's finish this part right this is very very important because these are very strong supports first support the cardinal one right cardinal name itself is like cardinal support the another name of this cardinal is lateral ligament now that clarifies everything it means it will be going laterally yes it will be going laterally laterally so then can we call it transverse transverse cervical yes it is going transversely from the cervix simple so this is that ligament so here it is it is what is called as the transverse cervical right we'll we'll keep different colors so that there are some very enthusiastic persons unnecessarily they race their bike so much okay now here there would be what pubic symphysis correct so anteriorly from cervix to it is going towards pubic symphysis so we'll call it pubo cervical pubo cervical right pubo cervical ligament and it will be going to posterior surface of pubic symphysis so that is pubo cervical so pubo cervical transverse cervical transverse cervical also called as cardinal also called as the lateral ligament also called as the mckenrod's ligament right there is <coughs> that that name mckenn rods ligament only one which is left out and that is which is going posteriorly posteriorly there would be this is what sacrum right sacrum so then the ligament which will be going from cervix to sacrum so it would be going like this right be going like this so that is going to sacrum so what name should be given 
ideally the name instead of giving the name uterosacral right what it is everyone tells uterosacral it can be called as cervicosacral also cervicosacral or sacrocervical right sacrocervical because that is more scientific so that's this say so these are the real major good supports good supports right so now easy now when you see this right say all of them from the from the uterus right they will be going at different level but then when we watch it from the top this is how they look like okay now see it is it everything has become so easy again a section where we now we are watching the arterial supply right this is now we are focusing on arterial supply in arterial supply that's the uterine artery right uterine artery and we remember that it was the internal iliac and in internal iliac it divides into anterior division and posterior division and this is the branch of that anterior division and that's the uterine artery this is the chief supply this is the main supply so this is chief right let's mark it with a star and this is the artery which would be enlarged in pregnancy right this is the artery it has got two things right two points to remember one it would be anastomosing with ovarian artery right so ovarian artery right and anastomosis and we'll write it like this that it would be enlarged in pregnancy now that's quite logical no? because if it is the main artery and and as we understood that during pregnancy all these blood vessels they become coiled because they have to provide rich blood supply it is this artery who will be taking that entire burden right so it is that uterine artery okay the second point which we need to know that see it is into that broad ligament right broad ligament with uterine artery but well we already know about it right uterine artery is not supplying only the ureter nearest one right again it is the artery which has got a huge heart it will say whosoever is near i'll supply to all of them so that's the reason it supplies vagina but most important it supplies medial two-third of uterine tubes right lateral one-third was by that ovarian artery so it is this medial medial two-third of ovarian uh, i'm sorry not ovarian it is fallopian <coughs> fallopian tubes so that's something which is important so we'll mark it then other other are all minor right others are all minor that it gives say supply to all those surrounding structures this that everything but this is main while it gives branches for that ureter and others so that's the arterial supply now let's see the venous drainage now we said that in venous drainage there is a plexus right so that's why it becomes much easier that in case of venous drainage everything goes into the form of plexus so one thing is where is that plexus well if this is the if if this is the ureter uh, if this is the ureter right and that's the lateral side so this is where on the lateral side this plexus is formed right so that plexus is over here this plexus is a joint effort of uterine vein ovarian vein because arteries they were anastomosing but same uterine and ovarian veins they also do that right and the vaginal veins 
they form that plexus and it finally drains into the internal iliac veins. Well, this is not more, much away from the arterial supply because in arterial supply, it was the internal iliac artery which was giving a branch, right? And it was supplying. So, here it is just the reverse of the thing, right? So, that's how the venous drainage, it takes care of. This is about the lymphatics, like lymphatic drainage. Right. This is a nice figure, so not much of the explanation would be needed and you can understand it very effectively. Say, just upper and the lower part. <laughs> and that upper part will go towards the aortic nodes and the lower part will go towards all are draining towards the superficial inguinal nodes. Few upper, few lower and then external iliac internal iliac sacral nodes right practically if you see this is draining into so many nodes that's the reason that why carcinoma of uterus is so so dangerous because see it it can actually spread at so many places right so the order of importance it goes like this, external iliac, internal iliac, and then the sacral nodes. Right? Because in that order, that's how it comes. Okay. So regarding the nerve supply, We need to know two things in this. One, that sympathetic and the parasympathetic plexus. And the parasympathetic supply. Right? T12, L1. Right? And over there, standard S2, S3, S4. Right from the beginning, right? We are using these values. S2, S3, S4. Here also, it is no different. Sympathetic would do what? It will lead to uterine contraction, vasoconstriction. Right? Vasoconstriction, so we already know that. Right? Because right from the beginning also, we are talking about this. Because they are motor to those smooth muscles of arteries. Right? Of vessels. So, when they are smooth muscles, so when they contract, yes, when they contract, so it means those vessels, they will be reduced into their caliber. <clears throat> so, this is vasoconstriction and this is vasodilation or dilatation. One and the same thing. Vasodilation or dilatation. This is uterine contraction uterine uterus contract so uterus is contracted now see how the pharmacology is associated when you know that sympathetic stimulation will lead to uterine contractions right and that means this will be leading this will be helping in delivering the baby but for some reason if you want to keep that thing at halt, right, or you want to delay it, that means it is the parasympathetic which will be coming into picture, right, where it would be said uterine relaxation. So, uterus won't contract. So, it is also called as uterine inhibition. Right? So, you are telling that uterus muscles don't contract. Correct. So, do remember putting the star, this is very important, especially when we'll be discussing pharmacology at that point, it will come into picture. Okay. <clears throat> Both of them, right? This would also carry pain sensation, but from pain in the cervix. While this would carry the pain sensation, but that is from the body of uterus body of uterus yeah. and yeah definitely it is not only this this system but 
but hormones they also play a major role in this now how the sympathetic and parasympathetic they will actually be say giving their fibers they will be giving it via inferior hypogastric nerve and ovarian plexus right so via inferior hypogastric nerve plus ovarian plexus so it means that they prepare the plexus in which there is combination of sympathetic and parasympathetic and like a common conduit common pipe in which there is a wire for light there is a wire for fan they both are going right but they are doing their individual function it is just the pipeline which is carrying both the wires so similarly this inferior hypogastric nerve or these plexus they are acting like a pipeline right but it is carrying the fiber sympathetic and the parasympathetic both right so that's how it it really goes okay i i take just one minute break uh, right i'll be back in a minute You see, there are few changes in the uterus, right, with age. Say, in the fetal age, you'll find that cervix, size of the cervix is bigger than the uterine body, right, it is actually bigger. Only during the puberty, that size of the uterus size increases, it enlarges, plus it enlarges more during menstruation, right? It makes sense because walls were thickened, uterus was enlarged, it was more engorged, there was more blood supply, it was more vascular right so that's why it it size is increased obviously in pregnancy its size is massively increased right massively increased in pregnancy and then post delivery right post delivery it would once again come back to its normal size right as the age increases so in old age, it becomes atrophies. It can atrophy, it atrophies, or it decreases in size, right? So that's how there are changes with respect to, with respect to, say the structure and the structural changes in the uterus. Okay, we already talked about the supports of the uterus now let's put it in proper words right what we understood that was just a crude way but we understood that how it is now we are just putting few scientific words into that say primary support and the secondary support right primary and the secondary secondary supports it means what they they are those supports which are false <laughs> they are false supports right they are false they are just there to say otherwise false means we said that they are peritoneal folds right peritoneal folds so peritoneal folds they are useless right and which were they 
they were immediately we said one who was in interior right so that was what what that what was the name of that fold ureter that's right was cycle correct related to bladder so that was posteriorly it was recto uterine right recto uterine fold or the ligament just let's make him happy telling him ligament but otherwise they are of no use and then there was nambade darshan chote that is the broad ligament again a loose one not giving any good powerful support correct okay so then there were good supports primary primary supports they were in the form of two they can be in the form of two we can do it like that some are the muscular supports yes we know that these are the muscular support right which we were telling that in the form of pelvic diaphragm that's why the kegel exercises they are so important right the perineal body that is the perineal body that is the point where all those 10 muscles they were landing correct then very important that distal urethral sphincter because in case of female there is no proximal urethral sphincter so it is this distal urethral sphincter urethral sphincter we'll we'll talk about this right distal urethral sphincter which has got three components and they act like a sling right so they pull and that's how they act like that sphincter so these are pelvic diaphragm perineal body and distal urethral sphincter these are muscular supports active then these are like fibromuscular right fibromuscular yeah they are they are also tough right they were round ligament right round ligament of uterus then which was posterior so uretero uh, utero sacral or cervico sacral right utero sacral or cervico sacral then on the sides it was this transverse cervical right whose other name was cardinal correct cardinal or the lateral true and then the anterior one anterior was which was going towards that pubic symphysis the posterior wall of pubic symphysis so we know it like pubo cervical ligament correct so yes this is all good and and even even the uterine axis itself it gives the support because it is it is at an angle right so this is how everything falls into its place see pretty easy this is like pelvic diaphragm right and that's the that's the perineal body right and say urethra that's the vagina posteriorly it is anal canal in between it is this perineal body and that's the pubo coccygeus muscle now see this pubo coccygeus muscle its arrangement right it is this pubo coccygeus muscle which is vital which is vital why the kegel exercise in case of females because one and the one reason this is the muscle which prevents uterine prolapse this is the muscle right which prevents uterine prolapse so that's why this is so important no doubt there are some other features also and as as i talked about but i'll just put i'll explain later on in in detail but this is the muscle this is the muscle which actually plays a very major role in giving pleasure to the male partner that's the contribution of a female towards the male right pubic oxygen has got tremendous importance in case of males but pubic oxygen in case of female it has got that importance and as i 
talked about those things right still we'll talk about more well at this point of time perineal body right those 10 muscles right you should know right those 10 muscles so which were those 10 muscles right say they were like bulbospongiosus bulbospongiosus right there are one two because it is on both the sides then what was so that was one two then what is it yeah good evening right so bulbospongiosus then it was a lot pubococcygeus right again on both the sides right so this is three four then there were like those transverse perineae right transverse perineae and transverse perineae they were superficial and deep right again on both the sides right so it's too superficial too superficial too deep so three four this is five six right and left seven eight nine and ten right and finally sphincter in eye right sphincter in eye and long muscles of those anal canal right yes exactly those long muscles longitudinal muscles of anal canal anal canal right so that's how the perineal body that's why perineal body is so important as it is the landing station for almost 10 muscles okay now as i said we will be talking bit about urethral sphincter in case of females that why it is so vital and and obviously this is the distal urethral sphincter right just right distal urethral sphincter now this distal urethral sphincter i'll just draw it uh it would be something like say this is the this is the vagina right and on the anterior aspect say there would be the bladder correct there would be the bladder right and that would be this would be the opening right and this would be the vaginal opening correct so that would be the vaginal opening so this is vagina this is urinary bladder now as we said that this distal urethral sphincter is divided into three parts right one part which is under voluntary control right and that is what is called as the external urethral sphincter so how that external urethral sphincter well we'll we'll take it in this way that external urethral sphincter those fibers they are over here right they are over here so that is one external urethral sphincter remember in case of male there was internal urethral sphincter also right but over here it is not so external urethral sphincter voluntary control right? voluntary control voluntary if right full hmm. right voluntary control the second one that is urethro vaginal right urethro vaginal so this thing would go all the way from urethra right and it will go something like this so this one right so this is the second one urethro vaginal now see when it contracts when this muscle contracts with the support of vagina right when it will contract it will actually pull it will actually pull it will squeeze right so that when when it is squeezed the urine won't be allowed urine won't be going right so it will be squeezing the urethra at this point of time so that's how it acts like a wall right so this is one and the third one which is very vital it is called as the compressor urethra its function is just to compress this urethrovaginal would support and 
third color white white right from here obviously these are much powerful fibers and this one is what is called as the compressor urethrum urethra right compressor urethra so these two they will actually be compressing right they will be pulling it so that is for compression and this one is under voluntary control so it will squeeze the urethra so that's how it will be acting like a sphincter right it would be acting like a sphincter this is the reason it is so important this entire structure is important now during pregnancy right during after after when, when during delivery if these muscles are damaged if these are damaged now you understand that what would really happen right because when the baby is getting delivered if these muscles are torn or damaged why it happens that that person is unable to hold the urine especially when they laugh when they cry when there is coughing right when they try to do any of the exercise it is because these muscles they are affected and that's why that urethra is now unable to hold it and that urine drips it happens with so many females right so solution is that entire pelvic floor that should be strengthened so that's the whole idea of those kegel exercise because it is making these muscles much more powerful right again if you just rotate it you'll find that it is the deep transverse perineum and superficial transverse perineum levator and all of them they contribute right all of them they contribute and those muscles smooth muscles right deep transverse perineum which takes part into that from the lateral side right that is a smooth muscle okay this is easy just two things that uterosacral right that's the uterosacral sacral it is back so that's the direction of pull by the uterosacral so it pulls it back right what about the uterine axis so it is it is pulling right it is pulling the uterus on the back side and direction of pull by round ligament of uterus right round ligament of uterus so that's the uterine axis uterine axis so even if there is increased abdominal intra abdominal pressure so it gen generates the pressure on it still nothing happens because these are the strong ligaments and they keep everything into its correct position right fine that's the bird's view superior view right superior view and pubic symphysis good one that's the urethra all right that's the cervix we talked about it that's the rectum good that's the sacrum very well and then this is the pubo cervical these are the real supports this is the transverse cervical or cardinal or lateral right and the posterior one is utero sacral see how easy right and what are all these collectively they all are endopelvic fascia condensation right they are condensed condensed fascia right or the condensed or let's use the easy word they are thickened fascia right they are thickened fascia so that's why they are giving the such a good support true from here it is cake walk you trying to you know that ovary broad ligament transverse cervical ligament that's the muscle which we drew so many times levator ani that's the cervix these are the fornix right these are the fornix that's the vagina then the pelvic wall and that's the urogenital diaphragm see that's urogenital diaphragm so it supports at that level levator ani is over here so even that also helps 
right? Just the representation of cervical ligament, right? Cervical ligament or the transverse cervical ligament or the cardinal ligament, all same. Or the McEnrod's ligament, right? If you want to try to impress someone, McEnrod's. Okay. That's the round ligament, right? Right here. You need to see that round ligament. Here it is. That's the round ligament, right? So, what round ligament is doing? A round ligament, it starts at the lateral angle of the uterus, right? Entero inferior, right? From the lateral angle, lateral angle of uterus, and then it is going towards labia majora, right? And it is passing through two layers of broad ligament through deep inguinal ring, and that's where it lands. Right. So, all the way its path is between two layers of broad ligament. Yes, we saw that, right, because in the contents of broad ligament, we said one of the content was round ligament. And because it is the remnant of that embryological gubernaculum, something which is passing through the inguinal canal, so through deep inguinal ring, Right, deep inguinal ring, and then it goes all the way into the groin, right, and where it merges with labia majora tissues, right? Labia majora. And as we said, say if if it is pulling like this, right? Let's see the color. If it is if it is pulling the uterus like this. So that is what it it way it lands on the head of the bladder, right? It lands on the head of the bladder. Correct? Anteriorly. This is anterior. Okay. That's just the location of IUCD, intrauterine contraceptive devices, right? So this is like how the copper T is placed. So there is a device, right? This entire copper T is, is, is into, it's like a folded structure, right? It is inserted and then the outer tube is taken off and then it spreads and it takes this position. Those threads, they are there in case if it is to be removed. So those threads, they can be removed. Right, so that's how this is. This is what is called as the copper T. Because of the properties of copper, it won't allow implantation. Now, something which is very important. These are what's called as the uterine fibroids. A very common pathology. Very common. Right. Over here, it's again, it's a topic where there are several, several say stages, several divisions, depending upon its quantity, or depending upon its location, depending upon its size. And, and, and at times the size is massive, right? At times the size is massive, but these are something which develops into the walls of uterus and one of the very common complication is that those cycles they become heavy they they increase in duration and the bleeding is increased in the quantity so those cycles they are not only prolonged but they become heavy Right? So, uh, they are heavy and prolonged. I'll show you something. See. This is crazily big fibroid. So big. Right? 
so big, right? This is the fibroid. This is what is also called as the SOL. That is space occupying lesion. That's what is called a space occupying lesion. And yes, because it will be occupying the space, so it will be pushing rest of the structure. So actually disrupts the anatomy. So you need to measure it very properly. And if you see how it is measured, the distance from fibroid ventral side to the skin. So that's where it is seen that what is the abdominal wall thickness? And then what is the distance from fibroid on the dorsal side of sacrum? So this is the distance which is measured. So that is to give the judgment that where exactly, see this, see how the, how the uterus is deformed, right? How it is badly deformed. So whenever there is any of the SOL, space occupying lesion, one thing, you need to measure the size of it. That is the first thing. And second, what is its relative position right relative position with respect to a fixed structure fixed structure right the way we give address to someone right we we never say that uh, my house is where Right? We never say it like that. Right? Because that guy, that is that, that cow is not a fixed structure. So same way over here, when you are defining any of the space occupying lesion, take care of these two things. Right? So that's it. Difficult part is complete. Now to finish that, the last topic that is the vagina and it is also called as the colpos so that's why so many terms are associated with it the thing what is called as the colposcopy colposcopy right so colposcopy is that procedure to look into the cervix and to figure out if there is any pathology then what is called as the colpotomy right it is colpotomy Tomi. Tomi means to cut. Right? It's to cut. It is when the incision is put. Right? Incision is put in, in the back wall of vagina. Right? Into the back wall of vagina. And usually it is for that tubal ligation. Right? For the tubal ligation it is done. Or there is one more thing what is called as the colporaphy. Colporaphy, that is repair, that is repair of vagina. So these are some of the terms, right? The vital thing is that normal diameter, the normal diameter is of 5 centimeters. Now, do understand this thing because on, in, on next Sunday, the lecture which we are planning, we'll be talking about some, some of the very sensitive things. One of the things is that the diameter of this is 5 cm, right? And it is distensible. It is so much so that it is distensible for the head of that newcomer, right? Head of fetus when it is coming out, so it is that distensible. So it has got some very specific features and the functions. Got it? So, easy. That's the rectum. This one is vagina. That's the urethra. This one is urinary bladder. And as we said, right, as it will proceed, so here there would be the uterus. So, that's why, say, this is the cervix. Correct. That's the cervix. Over here, that's the anal canal. And in between, the most important vital is the perineal body. Right. So these are these are the related structure. Just to see it in with some more clarity. And so that's the cervix. Right. On top, there was uterus. Right. And see, 
this is the levator in eye muscle and say that's the vagina and then these are the labia minus and the labia majora they will be further and these are the greater vestibular glands right and the bulb of vestibule which we discussed way back and the hymen right all those vaginal arteries uterine arteries ut they are coming vaginal arteries they are coming from the uterine arteries and that's how the entire structure is really formed this is for the arterial supply right arterial supply so here it is those ovarian artery which are entering the ovaries but the most important is this uterine artery which are crossing the ureter and then they are giving all those branches right some of the branches which are also called as the cervical vaginal branches these are the branches from uterine artery so nearest uterine artery as we said that it supplies to the nearest one so that's how it supplies vital thing to remember in this case that it is the lower part right rest all to it is okay but the lower part it is supplied not by the uterine but it is by middle rectal middle rectal plus internal pudendal internal pudendal arteries plus do remember this it is only the lower part right that is what it would be say so regarding the venous drainage right regarding the venous drainage it is very specific same way there would be the vaginal plexus right there would be the vaginal plexus this vaginal plexus that would be the form by the contribution of all those vaginal veins and finally they will be draining into yes standard internal iliac vein right for the lymphatics lymphatics is bit specific to understand this we have to divide into three parts the upper one third middle one third and the lower one third right so upper one third they will be going into external iliac nodes right middle one it will be going for this internal iliac nodes and the lower one third that would be going for because now it is the inguinal region so superficial inguinal nodes right that's it right so that's how it would be distributing it now something which is very sensitive why sensitive because it is about the nerve supply divide it into two, two parts the upper two third this is pain insensitive right remember it is not carrying any pain fibers the lower one third is highly sensitive right so it is pain sensitive but hi this is because of <clears throat> same those nerves pudendal right pudendal now and there was one more which was the perineal branch right perineal now that will be giving that posterior labial branches so those posterior labial they will be carrying the pain sensation so we'll just write perineal now but to be very specific it would be the posterior vaginal branches 
right? So this much is there. <clears throat> what about the standard sympathetic, parasympathetic? No change. Absolutely same. So sympathetic, parasympathetic, right? Writing it in so short, L1, L2, this so goes by S2, S3, S4, right? And this is vasoconstrictor and this is vasodilator, same as every time. And again, all these, this entire package, it goes into a common conduit, common wire, right? A common pipe. And that is that pipeline is called as same as previous one right carried by carried by inferior hypogastric right even uterus was also having the same thing right so same thing happens over here inferior hypogastric now plus utero vaginal plexus so this is what it carries all of them right so it is the plexus which is so vital plexus finally few clinical things before we end it one one Vaginal lacerations, lacerations, that is if it is cut right, due to any of the reason, not only it is painful but it gives profuse bleeding, heavy bleeding because this is a highly vascular and highly sensitive structure, right? So this is one. Second, infection, right, vaginitis. So that would lead to leucorrhea. Leucorrhea is white discharge. Right? It is the white discharge. And it requires immediate attention. If you go into more detail than like those trichomonas, right? then that uh, gonococcal, etc. Third important is that prolapse. Now see, when the anterior wall prolapses, right? When the anterior wall prolapses, anterior wall is in relation with what? It is in relation with bladder, right? So when anterior wall is prolapsing, it's coming out. So it actually drags the bladder, right? So it drags bladder and then such condition is called as the cystocele because bladder is also called as cyst right so it is called as the cystocele if it is dragging urethra so then it is called as the urethrocele right it makes sense because anterior wall is associated with that now same way if the posterior wall is getting dragged, right? posterior wall is getting dragged, so then this posterior wall <clears throat> will pull only one structure, that is rectum, right? So when the rectum is dragged, so it would be called as the rectocele. Right? So that, that's the reason that these prolapse, they, they are pretty, pretty difficult. Right? Pretty important and should be avoided. And this is what is called as the bimanual palpation. Right? Bimanual palpation. So in bimanual palpation, say one finger, right? Those two fingers they are into the into the vagina and on from the top the compression is put. The idea is one about the uterus its size its position is there any space occupying lesion 
right for all those things is there any pelvic mass etc nowadays in in case if it is to be done the much better more effective thing because this is a very subjective thing right person who is examining he is knowing that what exactly is happening but if you really want to document it so then in ultrasonography you need to go for what's called as the transvaginal sonography right it is trans vaginal sonography it cannot be done <clears throat> with a normal probe right it is this is a probe which is which is an oblong probe right oblong probe and this probe is having high frequency high frequency because higher the frequency right it won't be traveling long right because higher frequency means what number of cycles per second if number of cycles per second are more so then it will die out faster but because every cycle is carrying the information so over here you are visualizing a very short distance right so that's why these high frequency probes are used and this is very effective for polycystic disease or fibroids or all those things they can easily be seen and it can give a very accurate picture right so because over here you don't have to worry about whether the bladder is full or not as the probe is entering directly into the uh, say uterus right so that is what is called as the transvaginal sonography so that's it for today thank you so much and we meet tomorrow just one or two more lectures are there to finish abdomen and then we'll start with the head and neck right and i've just saved this thing and i'll put it into our shared folder within two minutes thank you and bye bye and good night